Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and you are on the lifeboat. You know what? I was just cracking a joke with someone on the phone who just doesn't get a joke. If I ever tell you I'm thinking of killing you, if I ever go, man, I will kill you, chances are it's because I'm making a crack about the fact that whatever you're doing is probably you're, you've pushed it over the edge. It's usually said perfectly and loud, right? With a smile on my face. And I will kill all of you. Scooby Lee, good to see you. Valerie 102, Lord Kiss Freak, Smitty, what's happening? Just Pauline, good to see you. Prairie Breeze, boy, have we got an ugly story here today, people. Shani, good to see you. Nicola, you're not going to like this one, I promise. Layla. Layla. Kristen, how are you? Good to see you. Brazy. There's my girl. Fancy Nancy, how are you? Meredith Lynn, good to see you. Barbie. Hope you're doing well. Dom's mom. 725. There's pause. What's happening, Ben? Boy, has that dude got some meat hooks. Not believe the uh, dude's got ham hocks. Like, you would not believe it. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Stacey Zolan, good to see you. Sandy Wandy. Deeming, there you are. Love the yoga? All right. Nacho's mom, glad you're here. Taekwondo. Yeah, hard to say uh, hi to everybody on the phone, man. You'd be... Robin Bliss, Jennifer Folsom, good to see you. Robin, you know that one of the uh, brothers, Gib, one of the Bee Gees was named Robin. Threw that out there just in case my friend is here, because got a guy on the boat's a big fan. Give him a shout out whenever I can. Hello, Lisa. Lisa, do you have any idea how many pair of glasses I have now? Stephen's son sent in the care package because he's tired of me not being able to find glasses, and now there is a pair of readers on every flat surface between here and the airport. I'm set. Tony Shooter, good to see you. Awakened. You know something? I might have a... Did, ben, didn't we take a picture of our hands? I might have one. I'm almost 100% sure I took a picture of it. Of course, a lot of times I'm 100% sure. Uh, nobody on YouTube is used to seeing my, yeah, yeah, I should warn people that were a little white. You know, I get you, I get you. It is winter here, people, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we do we do get a winter season. I mean, yeah, I know Johnny's tan, but Johnny didn't do anything. He was lazy. Hey, Robin, you caught a lie. You did. You're officially here. I promise. We are live. Katrina, good to see you. Kimmy's blue. All right, you ready to fire this thing up? Ready to take this boat out into the water? Legs. Hey, man, those legs were working. I was, I was, uh, I was getting a workout. It really was. Uh, I've got, uh, there will be more coming up. Now, listen, just before we get rolling on that, uh, on that whole yoga thing, the next video, uh, that there'll be a series of yoga ones. For those of you who left comments and said, loved it, boy, I wish I could get them to do that. There's no chance. I'm going to be doing a video for people that can't do that yoga. All right, we're going to do some chair yoga. We're going to do uh, another video for people that can't do either, right? If all you can do is get up and get out of that chair, I'm going to have a video for you too um, because all of us are going to start getting jet. It's a little bit more movement into our life. Why? Because it's a damn good thing. Uh, Reese was telling everybody that I was doing naked yoga for the members. Well, good advertising. God bless her. I, mean, I knew there had to be a reason that the, uh, that the subscription count was up. Uh, yeah. Using Johnny's home gym. You know what? Johnny's a beast. Johnny is a beast. Wait till you see what that dude looks like in six months. Because my brother is a circus freak. And if he decides he's going to do something, nobody on planet Earth will do it uh, more hardcore. There might be people that will do it better. There might be people that will do it, uh, you know. But no one is going to put more effort into it. Because that's just how he gets down. Shards of words. Good to see you. I am so glad that you're going to have, uh, you're going to be getting back into it, Lisa. I want to tell you something. I know that there are people out there that don't dig uh, yoga, right? There are people out there that just don't dig yoga, and I get it. I look like a runner. Oh, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, my God. That was, a, that was an inside linebacker. I don't, you were the first person in history to ever say that I look like a runner. I'll take it. That's kind of where I'm going now, I guess so. Changing body types, uh, to be sure. I'm going for the runner. Uh, it's definitely more more the uh, the what I'm looking for. Yoga does so much with mental and physical pain. It's so true. 
It really is. It is so true. Um, I do love yoga, uh, Breezy. I really do. Um, Breezy. Uh, breezy. Breezy, 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 breezy. I love it, to be really honest with you. The best part was this, man. Um, I am following the Delphi murders. Absolutely. And, oh, man. Uh, I could take a towel and I could throw it down on the ground. And it didn't matter where I was. They could not stop me from working out. Right? And inside, you get you get a, a big bag of, uh, of books. Right? Anything you can do to create weight. Right? You fill bags full of water. Right? Make water bags. And you start doing... And guys try to bulk up or do whatever. But, man, I could do yoga. Right? There was nothing they could do. No matter where they put me. No matter what they took from me. Even if I was on the watch. Or if I was on paper. Or whatever they were doing. Man, I could always do. I could always do yoga. And got really, really into it. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, never, I, I don't think I ever got particularly good at it. But I uh, I, sh I like the hell out of it. And it, uh, and I have a good time with it. You know, I've uh, I've always kind of tried to concentrate on um, on just doing the poses as, uh, as well as possible so that you're getting the, the most burn that you can get. So I'm just trying, that's. That little micro adjustment. I'm telling you, if, you, if you're just watching it, you know what it looks like? Uh, you know, it looks like somebody's doing uh, Jane Fonda. Like I remember guys in prison laughing about it, you know, going, oh, I'm doing a Jane Fonda workout. I'd say, come on down and do a little Jane Fonda with me, bro. Um, right now, especially like what I'm doing is I'm showing you guys that all of the poses, right? But eventually we're going to do a workout where we don't rest in between poses. We roll from one into the other. Um, the first time I did yoga, I was probably 20 doing it a really long time. Um, I've been doing it a really, really, really long time. Uh, but I didn't get super into it. I'm not going to lie to you. I did it as a way to try to meet women for a really long time. <laughs> it was a, it was always a great way to meet women. It really was. You know something? Uh, here's the sad thing. Brazy's done this for me like three times. And I, I, I even remembered what it was, Brazy. I just, I'm slipping. My, uh, it's, yeah, I, for me, it's always been, um, it's always been something that I did. Like in the beginning, it was to try to, to meet women, just keeping it real. And then I would say in my, uh, in my thirties, um, skiing started to take a way bigger toll on me. Um, and I got into yoga because, uh, I needed to, if I was going to continue to do what I was doing. I needed to, uh, to do yoga. And, and as a, Public speaker, you know, you could go into a weight room in every single hotel you speak at, and you're going to meet people that you just spoke to. And honestly, as a speaker, you guys, like if I went and met you, I'm there to meet you. But as a public speaker, you're not there to meet the crowd. You don't want to, you don't want to talk to the crowd or do anything. So I could do it in my room. I could do it upstairs. It's just, it's, it's great because all you need to do, I mean, you really only need a few feet. Anna, I was horrifically unflexible. I mean it. In the next uh, yoga video that you see, um, there's a, a part where I sit with like my, the pads of my feet together and I put my head on my feet. And I remember the very first time I started trying to do that, uh, that pose. And there was two and a half feet between my head. You know, when I looked at someone else sitting across from me and doing it, I went, there's no way. There's no way that is ever that's not a possibility or putting your hands behind your back and grabbing your own hands. Like I watched people do that and just went, there's no way, like I'm not even close, but if you just, it's, it's great because it's uh, like, like golf, right? You're never going to get good at yoga. Like you're never going to get good at, at golf, but it's good for you. Hey, Veronica Bombria, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. You were on my uh, on my mind the other day. Somebody brought your name up, and you were on my mind. Now we're going to talk about this prison stuff, people. I wanted to make sure we got as many people here as we could before I got fired up. Because if not, you guys wander in and go, what are we talking about? All right, so here's what we're talking about. We're talking about a prison for women in the federal system called Dublin. It is in California. Now, Dublin has had some famous inmates go through it, and... That's fairly uh, logical. There are not a lot of uh, women's prisons, right? In the BOP, there just aren't. There aren't a lot of women in the uh, uh, here for the sex scandal. That's the spirit, Anna P. Well, you're here, here just in time, right? Let's talk a little sex. Uh, 
this happens all the time in prison, people, right? This is nothing new. So why am I talking about it, right? Because today, as we speak, there is a, a, a guard doing something inappropriately with a woman, right? That's it. Currently, there is a guard doing something inappropriate with a woman. She cannot consent to, even if she said to him, hey, buddy, and called him into the, into the cell. She cannot consent. She's an inmate. A guy who's an inmate couldn't consent. Um, Warden Garcia, you were at Dublin. Hello, you were at Dublin. You need to reach out to me. Please send me an email. Please send me an email. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to talk to you. Yeah, Warden Garcia is gone. Um, warden Garcia was the, uh, the warden, the first warden to go. But, um, uh, Lolo, you will be happy to know that yesterday they went in and got a whole new uh, set of suits out of there, right? So originally, the warden, the associate warden, and the captain. And if you know anything, right, warden, uh, the chaplain was the other. Um, the warden, chaplain, associate warden, captain, and I think three guards. Uh, that was the first round, right? That was back in 2020. The number of cases is now at 67. 67, right? Now, there's a word, right, that we use to describe this type of relations, right? Word starts with an R. You know this word, right? It's not a nice word. But that's what happened to these women. If they were into it, begging for it, and enjoying it, it is still the R word because they do not have the ability, right? Now, here's what here's why I needed to bring up the R word because the cops in there were referring to what they were doing as an R club. Yeah. So 67 today, they are admitting that they don't have any idea how many. Because they're coming every day. New ones are coming out every single day. But on Monday, they went in there and they got rid of a whole new uh, group of staff. Right? If you're a warden in a woman's prison and you're using it like your own private brothel, right? You're just going around and, uh, by the way, so that we get to the, uh, the details, right? Because honestly, as sick as it is, we need them. Um, the details go like this. These guys spent an awful lot of time um, having uh, having sex with the inmates. They also spent a lot of time taking pictures of them when they were naked. They, uh, they got these people's phones. They got these people's computers. Now, the warden got six years. What do you think? Honestly. Calhoun, my son, what do you think? Six years? I don't know, man. I don't know. Six years of Fed time, right? They're going to give him at least six months to a year of halfway house, right? And he used to be a federal employee, so he'll get a year of halfway house, right? He's going to get probably four months off for, uh, for good time credits. Uh, so 14 months off at of the top of 60. We're off at the top of 72, rather. No, I don't think this is fair. Uh, they did not distribute the pictures that they know of yet. And that was the first place my head went, Anna. That is the first place my head went to. Okay? But these dudes were sitting around and talking about which ones were fun to go and assault. Do you remember when this happened in 2020? Huh? Do you guys remember when this happened in 2020? Of course you don't. Right? Of course you don't. The reason that they get away with it, Shannon Smith, is because for anything like this to happen, right? All it takes is good people to say nothing, right? But you didn't hear about it in 2020 when they when they convicted the warden. I didn't hear about it. 
I was in there. I was in the feds in 2020. Damn, you would have thought we would have heard about it. <laughs> right? I was still in there in 2020, people. I didn't hear about this. If and hummingbird, please leave and come back. Love, I don't want you to, I don't want to do anything to trigger you. I really don't. Uh, this Jennifer Folsom, this happened in 2020. The first set of assault happened in 2020. It did not stop. Here we are in 2024, and they went back in on Monday and seized all the computers, right? That people is an issue. Now, had we uh, had we heard about it, okay? had the world heard about this in 2020, maybe it wouldn't still be happening in 2024. Do you know why you didn't hear about it? Do you? Because those aren't women. They're animals. Don't get them messed up. For real. You know, they might be mothers. Their daughters and their sisters, they're convicts. They're convicts. Might be a little softer, right? Than uh, than their brothers next door, but they're convicts. And that's how they get treated. It's funny, if you were on Reese's uh, show earlier, you, you heard her doing kind of a um, comparison between uh, men and women. Yeah. Um, and how, and we talked a little bit about this. There are there are uh, there are women in uh, in men's prisons who will put men in situations where they need to do things, whether they want to or not. It happens. Don't think it only happens the other way around. I friggin promise you, it happens every single day with women messing around with men in men's prisons. Now, more often than not, everybody involved thinks, "Ooh, that dude won the lottery, didn't he?" Right? People on the street. It's just different, isn't it? If there's a guy in prison and he's having sex with a staff member, everybody goes, Whoa, oh, prison's not so hard for him. But if a woman is in there and she's having sex with the with a guard, it's painfully obvious to all parties involved that this woman is being repaid, right? But it's a, it really is kind of different. Now in 2019, which is the last time that they kept track or, or letting us know about it, 100 federal cops went to prison for this. 100. Now, or there, I'm sure, 100 arrests. I don't know if they all ended up in prison. I'm sorry. But 100, uh, 100 staff members were arrested from the BOP. Now, they run these stats, oddly enough, for all the government agencies. So in that same period of time, four people did something jinky like that in all of the FBI. And in all of the DEA, where you're out there pretending to be drug addicts and drug dealers or whatever, two people. Right? But in the BOP, 100. Now you say to yourself, why is that? Is it because they're surrounded by us? They get in there and they're surrounded by convicts. So all of a sudden, you know, they start... Ah, maybe I'll bring a little dope in. I granted, you know, the the term is turning someone out. You may have heard this, right? But that's what a cop, I mean, that's what an inmate would say. They find a female inmate, right? I mean, a female guard and they'll turn her out. The term is, you know, when you got one turned out, they're bringing you in whatever you want, right? Um, In the BOP last year, somebody brought in a gun. How's that? Somebody. Uh, an inmate got a uh, got a staff member to bring in a weapon, which oddly enough they took their own life with. It just seems like a, a really. I guess they just wanted to get the woman fired before they took their own life. I don't know what that was all about. Um, this is messed up. No matter what side of the aisle you're on, it's massively messed up, right? It really is. But it's a discussion worth having because I'll tell you something. It's happening to guys today, same way it's happening to women. And it's happening to guys, not just from women, but from men. Don't think there aren't uh, there aren't gay prison guards who are happy to be prison guards. 
And there were, I promise you, there were a few where it was wildly obvious. You know, like every inmate knew that these guys, they were there because they uh, they liked their job. They like to be sitting around by a lot of dudes. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just being me says, just me being me says, I have done a lot of things in my life, but I could never imagine treating anyone like that. Um, there is. There is absolutely a way to keep this from happening. In my humble opinion, this is not this is not even a hard one. Now, you're going to have you're gonna have people who slip through the crack, get in there, bad people who do bad things. Right? What we don't want is for that to, to occur so often that it's considered systematic, right? Or or you know where you have it happens so often. It's just considered part of, of doing time. There's something seriously wrong with that, right? We have, uh, we have a, a crew member that said that they did time in Dublin. I got news for you. You get convicted and you get sent to prison. You owe them X number of months. You don't owe them sex, right? You don't owe them, uh, you know, naked photos of yourself. But you want to make this stop? You don't give the warden six years. For real. This is the guy whose job it was to make sure that these women were safe. His gig. And he's letting guys go in there and shop for which ones were the best to sleep with? He should get life in prison. Am I, am I overreacting? This dude needs life in prison. That's the most effed up thing you could put. I mean, wrap your dome around this. Shannon Smith says, one's for anyone affected by this stuff. I can't begin to imagine how it feels, but I care. And the other one was, where was it? It was a comment I wanted to say. But no, it seems I've lost it. Calhoun, did you see something about Shamrock? Yeah, I don't see it anymore. Um, but... The uh, you got there was a, a comment I read somebody uh, that got in trouble with a shamrock shamrock tattoos you can get in trouble with inside. There are people who uh, they have adopted that with the uh, for the um, the brand uses that symbol as uh, as one of their own. Normally it has a six 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 below it. If it doesn't, uh, no, don't pimps get more time than that? Zelda, that's a great question, isn't it? Pandering. Uh, would be the uh, the charge, and I do believe pandering would get you more um, than that much time. My son's name is uh, is Michael. Calhoun is a uh, name uh, that I have been calling him since he was two. Uh, she got a pass because of her shamrock tattoo. Oh, I got you. Well, I, I, you know what? That could check out too, actually. The reason that they went and raided this place again yesterday is because nobody heard about it the first time. And you know what? If you go and deep dive and you start looking at this, you will hear all kinds of incredible things that politicians yelled back in 2020. Right? What's the name of that politician that farts? Come on, help me out. What's the name of that guy? <laughs> the fart gate guy. Hey, help me out. Who? Swalwell. There you go. There you go, Swalwell. Uh, this this is in his district, right? This is in his district. So uh, he was the one, you know, coming out and commenting on it and talking about, you know, what this was, you know, they were going to take care of this and this won't stand and they're not going to let six years? Holy hell, man. Hello, I am so sorry to hear this. She says, uh, my ex, convicted serial predator, got 16 years in prison, got out after 10 for good behavior. Within a month after release, he was trolling online. Well, here's the thing. I hate to say it, right? but it's a stone cold fact. Huh? You're right. Politicians are first. Uh, here's the thing. If you could, if you can find anything to, uh, to, to counter what I'm about to say, 
knock yourself out, right? But the freaks, right? the predators, they're not treatable. They're not. They're incarceratable. You let them back out, they reoffend, right? It just, it is what it is. But they don't have any luck whatsoever in doing any kind of rehab with these people. And they will tell you that. It doesn't, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. So maybe uh, a video from JD Delay popped up today for me. So much prison lingo, I needed a translator. Uh, JD gets on a roll, man. He, uh, he, he definitely uh, can speak it. You know, but like, we were talking about this yesterday with Reese. You know, I said to her, do you sometimes think in Scientology? And, you know, meaning the uh, the language, because you get a different, you start to think in different language and in, in different words. And words are how we think, right? We don't think in concepts because of you know, how we communicate. We think in words, don't we? We think about what we're planning on doing, but we're forming those things in our head. And if you're thinking with, you know, those kind of, uh, it really is bizarre. It really is bizarre. 100% untreatable. The leopard does not change its spots. I agree with you. I agree with you. Castration, not incarceration. You know what? I'd say, yeah, you're right. I agree with you 100%, right? But I don't, and I'll tell you why. Because this was tried. They tried this. They did it with chemicals. But they chemis they chemically castrated these freaks. And what happened is they just end up hurting or killing the victim instead of doing what they normally would have done. Since they can't do what they were trying to normally do, it just tends to make them more violent. It is not something that works. You know what does? Huh? Seriously? Removing them from planet Earth. And since every single time someone does one of those things, right? It is attempted murder of a soul. No, I'm not going to lose any sleep if we put uh, one in the back of someone's head. And if that makes you really uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but I don't think these people should be alive. You know, sorry. Yeah. Lead poisoning. And this is, here's the way I look at it, right? Kill them. And then when, when people complain about it, you can say they died of natural causes. Because if you were to touch my kids, that a natural cause would be me killing you. I promise. Right? I think I think if you touch kids, natural causes should be you uh, you dying of lead poisoning. Um, what happened to the warden, etc.? Once they are in prison, how do they get treated by other inmates? That's a hell of a question. Here's the thing: they're not going to be around other inmates, so to speak. Um, it is absolutely going to be one of those things where. Um, they are going to be put um, into a, like a cheese factory. That's what they call it. Place for rats. Usually really, really um, serious cheese factories have um, TVs in the cells, which they don't have anywhere else because these guys don't leave the, the cells. They just, they're, they're shut-ins. They're hiding. And they're hiding in a place that, you know, normal people aren't. They'll be with other really, really, really super high profile rats. Um, Shannon, it is, it's, uh, it's about control and it's about violence. It isn't, she's right. It's not about sex, right? Never has been. But, um, for many, the attempt is made, right? And, uh, it's any way you shake it, they just need to be removed from planet earth. I'm sorry. Just need to be removed from planet earth. It would be a better place. I'm glad you have a big, scary dog, Ann Hummingbird. I'm glad you have a big, scary dog. I think every woman should have a big, scary dog. I really do. Jennifer Folsom. No, but if you send me a link to it, I swear to you, I will uh, chase that one down. I'd love to look, look into that. She says there's a case going on about that. Dad shooting an entire family because they wouldn't stop their son from assaulting his daughters. I do not know that one. I, uh, but you know something? Um, can I get a five by five? Am I buffering for everybody or is it just for one person? Um, it's uh, how systematic, right? Is it? Yesterday I did a show 
and I was going off about uh, doctors and how one doctor, thank you, everybody, one doctor can screw it up for hundreds, if not thousands of them, right? You need one jack wagon that's writing scripts he's not supposed to. One guy that writes 1,100 scripts a day does damage to every single pain doc in the country. Just how it goes. Now, are all doctors scumbags? No. Are all pain doctors scumbags? No. No. Most of them are really good people that really want to treat pain. Unfortunately, the world gets involved and people start dumping all kinds of cash on people, right? And then things get clouded. This is unfortunately reality. Well, it's the same damn thing in a prison, right? Same damn thing. It doesn't take much. So of those 100 arrests in the feds last year, the vast majority of them were men assaulting women. There were a couple of women assaulting men, right? Because again, they can't consent either. And then I would say 20 of them were people just stealing your money, okay? The budget for the Bureau of Prisons is $8 billion a year. We say the word billion a lot in this country. We say the word trillion a lot in this country. And we start to lose perspective for how damn much a billion is, okay? If you had $999 million, right, you still ain't got a billion. That's terrifying. It really is. So 8,000 $1 million bills. If you had a million dollar bill, 8,000 of them is the budget for that prison. You, guess what? Rebecca, glad you're here. Guess what? They ain't spending that money on us. You got any idea how much of that money's going out the back door? Huh? I used to watch it. In fact, I used to help the cop I was working for do it better. For real. First time he cracked the books open for me, I said to him, you're going to get caught. <laughs> They're going to catch you, bro, and you're going to be living right next door to me. And he cursed me and called me a filthy convict. But he admitted to it later. Yeah, They're all doing it. Everybody's on the take. And let me tell you just how bad it is, right? Every prison's got a budget. They're going to drop X number of dollars on you. You have to spend every dollar of that, right? Every dollar to ensure that the following year you get a 15% increase. They increase it every year, 15%, unless you don't spend all the money. Let's say the budget for your prison is 10 million. If you spend 9 million, well, the next year, you're just going to get 10 more. But if you spend 10, you're going to get 10 plus a 15% increase. Lovely, right? So guess what happens? They spend that money. And I worked through three seasons and we'd start getting up on the fiscal year. The fiscal year in the feds is in September. Bull, September started rolling around. He'd look at me and go, Rock, we need to spend some money. We need to blow a bunch of it. And I'm not joking. you. Like we're sitting around coming up with ways. I was like, you know what? For uh, how about $2 an inmate? You give every single one of them a box of, uh, of Pop-Tarts to take home. He said, do it every, every single day this week. So every day that week, every single inmate that came to breakfast got a uh, box of pop tarts to take back to their cell, which was awfully kind, right? But they weren't being kind. They just got to blow through that budget. So you know what else we did? We loaded up the uh, we loaded up the ovens from the kitchen, right, to get them out of there because we were ordering brand new ones. So I looked on the back; they were four years old, four years old. Now, these are commercial ovens that literally should go for about 30 years, but got to spend that money. And I said to the guy I was working for, I go, what do they do with all this crap we're lugging out, stuff we're putting on the trucks? And he said, it goes to auction. I said, where a bunch of your friends are? He goes, ah, a relative or two. It's a hustle. And that was one prison of 127 okay, in the federal system just for the guys. And I promise you, it's happening at every single damn one of them. And guess what? When you leave the kitchen and you walk next door, 
to CMS. Those are the people that repair everything that's broken. They got a budget too, and they need to blow that by the end of the year. So in September, they're doing the dumbest crap in the whole world. Stuff that got painted 15 minutes ago is getting painted again, right? They're buying stuff and burying it. I'm not joking. Throwing things away, flushing things down toilets, anything they can do to try to blow the remainder of that cash, they got to get it done. So we painted while I was in the uh, tarot, when we painted the entire uh, staff cafeteria, brought somebody in to airbrush it. And they did this unbelievable mural. It was breathtaking. It really was. Fallen officers and tributes. It was, it was a beautiful thing. That was where the uh, guy's nose got bit off. Actually, I told that story here. But uh, yeah. And then what they did was they took the tables that were bolted to the ground, just like the ones that the, uh, the fellows, the inmates got. They got rid of them. He said, unbolt those things, get them taken out of there. So we took the bolts, ground them down, and they got beautiful wood tables. Like you walk into the staff cafe, you'd think you were in a restaurant. Tablecloths, lovely. Lovely. Now, you know what we could have done? Huh? We could have bought books. Right? Could have put a pet program in place. Could have bought musical instruments and taught these guys that you know what? Music, it's pretty amazing stuff. Get three or four people together that actually start to, to bring a sound out together. I've watched it do pretty amazing things to guys in music rooms and prisons. <laughs> why is the theft condoned? Um, why is the theft condoned? Well, because everybody's getting paid, right? Who's gonna who's gonna piss and moan about it? Right? Who's not who's not in on it? You would have to have somebody there that ain't in on it. So I don't know, I don't know who that would be. And it's pretty easy, right? To so give you a perfect example. There are 1,300 inmates on the yard, right? Now, if you're ordering a beef patty and it's 27 cents and you order a chicken patty right and it's 10 if you skip one beef meal a month right or a week over the course of a year you got any idea how much that starts to add up to and they did it with everything they would just buy something a little bit cheaper feel me they buy something just a little bit cheaper and give it to us. Didn't uh, and just like those poor girls in Dublin, right? Who just are supposed to go and be punished for the crimes that they did. They're supposed to just be locked up so that they can't see their kids or their boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever, right? That's the punishment. Punishment isn't getting raped. It's not the punishment. It's not supposed to be. Right? Neither's getting the crap kicked out of you. Or having the food that you're supposed to eat sold out the back door. Right? You go in and uh, some of the funniest crap ever, man. You go in on like, it, it would read uh, like, um, you know, shepherd's pie or something. And just nothing. There's no meat in any of this stuff. You're looking, you're like, anybody see any chicken? Like, I read the table. Now, on a rugged yard, you get a, you get a, a shot collar like that's running a serious yard, man. If, the, if there's not meat in the in the uh, in the kit, you know the food. If you're not getting a tray of meat, they're gonna kill people. Like they're gonna get those guys who are stealing. They're gonna handle it. In theory, you're not supposed to steal out of the kitchen if it's going to cost the guys that um, the guys that are eating. Right? That's never supposed to happen. Veronica will do it this way. I didn't see the Beatles, right? I didn't see the Doors. I saw almost everybody, man. I didn't see Queen, uh, but a almost anybody of um, of my generation or before, say um, say anything before about '88. I went to every single concert I could. I had a friend who owned a concert security company, so I had good seats. Took Johnny to a bunch of them. I think I've seen just about everybody. I really, really done. Uh, Done well with concerts. The guards get away with this. Good God, Brazy, they do. 
right? I mean, this is what we just found out. We know that it has happened 67 times, 67 times. ELP, you know what? ELP didn't do a lot of touring, right? Emerson, like, and Palmer's a great band, but they weren't, they, I think they were more studio musicians. I don't remember them touring in my time, but great band. Private companies control theft. Why can't prisons? Well, that's an excellent question, isn't it? Private companies don't have employees that can stab them, right? So the people inside are pretty nervous about getting home, honestly, whether they want to admit it or not. They're pretty nervous about getting home at the end of the day. That's what they want. So when I leave the kitchen every day, I walk out and I go like this on the way out the door. And a cop comes up and pats me down from head to toe, right? And then you lift up one foot, you lift up the other foot, he waves this metal detector thing to make sure you're not taking any metal out of the kitchen. But most guys have got meat taped to the inside of their legs. They got, you know, fruit, anything they, that they can steal. Now, if the cop says to the guy, hey, what's that? Two pounds of, uh, of uh, raw raw meat in your, uh, you know, taped to the inside of your leg. You can't do that, right? Takes the stuff back from him. Well, that fellow's not going to be pretty happy with the cop. Oh, Prince, good concert, especially for your first. Kimco. There you go. Now you can say hi to everybody. Ah, Barbie. That's the question, isn't it? When the abused women get out of prison, can they charge an individual guard or guards with SA? No, that's it. On the bright side, this is all coming out right now. So a bunch of guys are getting arrested. This is happening. There are guys, that, but they're not getting time. How does the warden get six years? Six years, right? I was 55, hysterectomy, and discovered all the urine tests I took weren't for drugs. They were pregnancy tests. Oi. Good Lord. How's that? This is a, this is a, a former inmate at Dublin. Right. By the way, you know the Nexium cult, right? The uh, the girl from uh, Smallville, whatever it's called. She's at Dublin. Um, there's been uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of pretty well known. Um, Heidi Fleiss was there. Been some famous people that have gone uh, that have gone through there. But it's. Uh, Nice. You saw the Ramones and Debbie Harry way back in Summerfest in Milwaukee. Next night was Depeche Mode and Nitzirab. I uh, I saw uh, the Ramones open for Debbie Harry too. I saw it at, uh, they were at CBGB's. They were just, I guess you, at CBGB's they didn't say opening. There was just, there were two bands, but uh, the Ramones played first. I loved Blondie. Not just the band. I love Deborah Harry too. I just loved her. I thought she was so fantastic. Really, really dig it. Is the six-year sentence a product of institutional misogyny? Well, that's it's a good question, isn't it? Um, I think it's well, this guy was a Fed. Right? I mean, he was a Fed. I'm sorry, what? You saw Billy Joel a few nights ago? I'm not going to like you for the rest of the day. It's okay, though. Tomorrow I will. I'm sure it was an excellent show. We're getting to the point where Billy isn't going to be doing him for too much longer. He's, uh, I never saw Jim Carroll, and that was a function of age, of my age. Huge Jim Carroll fan. Massive Jim Carroll fan. But, uh, the Jim Carroll band, um, they did a lot in New York and, uh, you know, they played a lot in New York and they did a little bit of touring, but right around the time that I would have been able to, uh, to probably get, um, you know, into that, like that, when I was coming about of that age was right about when they came out with, um, people who died then, which was their only, like, that was really Jim's only like commercially successful, uh, song. And uh, that was it. Poof, he was on the road. Left New York and well, the rest, as they say, is history.
how does a guard assault a male inmate in that way and not catch a whole beat down? Well, because um, there are a lot of gay men in prison, right? There's a lot of gay men in prison. And um, very often, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that the guy went in there and uh, forced himself onto the guy. But once again, gay, straight, whatever, you're not consenting if you're in a box locked up, right? I've said this before. I worked at Unicor and I was happy to have the job, right? But I, I couldn't even consent to that job. I would have done anything. That's not consent, right? That's not consent. There's nothing I wouldn't have done to get that job. In fact, I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go stand in line, right? Just to be in their line of sight so that if somebody got fired, you had a shot at it. I did it for months to work for nothing, to work for pennies an hour. I don't think that's consent. I don't. I don't. It's um, the incarcerated can't consent to a damn thing. I told the story. I can't tell you how many times, but I would come home from work and the guys would be standing at the door, right? Right by the unit. There'd be 25 of them, right? 15 of them, whatever. I'd walk up, grab the door, yank it open and walk in. Because an incarcerated guy will not grab a door to see if it's open. They will not walk through a door until somebody opens it for them. It's horrific. Honest to God, it's horrific. They'd stand there, out, I'm telling you, for five hours. They would stand on the outside of that door and not try it. But an old black guy pointed out to me the, one of the very first days I was in there. He's like, man, if you get to a, if you get to a door and there are people standing outside it, see if it's open. Nine out of ten times it is. And he's right. But guys will not walk through a door if it's locked. It's called institutionalization. It's an ugly thing. But... Sadly, prison beats a lot out of you. And you know what? Bring it. If you're a bank robber, you got that coming. I don't think that there are too many women at Dublin that, that deserve what they're getting. Feel me? That's, that's so friggin' out of line. And you know something? There's not going to be, nothing's going to get done. I hate to say that, but nothing is going to get done. Right? Raise your hand if you knew that the warden went to prison. Raise your hand if you knew that the warden, right, and the chaplain and the captain and one of the associate wardens and a bunch and a bunch of staff all got rounded up, dragged out of there, prosecuted and sent to prison. Do you know any of that? No, no, because they don't want you to know they only got a little over a nickel. That warden wasn't just having sex with people. That warden was sharing info with the other, uh, with his other um, staff about which ones were good, which ones were fun, classy, classy. Yeah, the chaplain too. Sorry, but yep, the chaplain too. It is a form of sex trafficking, Kelly, is it not? And, and you know, Kelly was on with me the other night. Kelly is a uh, uh, an ex-con as well. And, you know, she said there are women in there that work it, right? There are women in there working it. They're doing everything they can to get the attention of a guard. Everything they can do, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's trafficking. Yeah, it's traffic. But for the guy running the joint to allow this to happen, right? He should be in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, they say Elton used to have, what, like 30 or something uh, costume changes? Uh, glitter, large glasses, feather boas, platform shoes, the yellow brick road tour. Was that 75, 76, something like that? Might even move before that. Was it in the 70s? Goodbye, yellow bureau. Good tune. Where the dogs of society home.
You saw Metallica, ACDC, Celine Dion, uh, Alice, Iron Maiden, Elton. You know what's funny though, Brazy? Check this out. Um, I read this and you guys go up really quickly, right? Like it'll stop for a second and then it'll disappear. So I literally read, Tommy, I'm close to your age in my butthole. And then the thing just disappeared. <laughs> like I, that's as far as I got in the sentence. And I thought, oh man, that's that's unfortunate. No idea where that was going, but now I got to back up. Uh, Liberace. Liberace was fantastic. One of my favorite lines is from uh, Austin Powers when he goes, Liberace was gay? I didn't see that one coming. Women love that. I didn't see that one coming, baby. Barry Manilow was fantastic. You don't have to hate to admit that. I love Barry Manilow. What do you think of that? Love him. Love him. I was a huge fan. And, you know, very talented. Even if you don't like the guy, you, you like a bunch of his music because he's written tunes for everybody. Chris Isaac. Yeah, I remember Chris Isaac. You're the next contestant on the Praise Right. Come on down. Kevin B says, Kelly, come on down. Uh, 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 da, da, da. Yeah, Barry Manilow, was, I, I, was I was a huge fan. He, uh, and when he would do concerts, he would sing all of the commercials because that's how he really got wealthy was writing jingles like the plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Fast, fast, fast. That was him. But in concert, he would sing all of the uh, stuff, the jingles that he had written, which is kind of funny. Jim Marie says, I used to listen to Barry Manilow when, uh, to relax when I was a kid. With my big headphones on, love big headphones. The R10s inside prison, they still sell them. The big beefy ones that the guys have put on, that, that R10s, that's what you want. They also got, you can also get 40s, but they don't have an R in front of them. I can't remember what they call the other ones, something else, but uh, a K something 40s, but the, R, the R30s are the ones you want. Do, 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 do. You saw the first two Lollapaloozas. I can beat it. Wait till you hear this story. Uh, saw the first two Lollapaloozas. So that got me Jane's Addictions, Butthole Surfers, Pearl Jam, Ministry, and so many more. And then, and then Mustang Marketing bought the tour bus, the Lollapalooza tour bus. That was the uh, the tour bus that we uh, that we took all through the the West Coast uh, on the public speaking tour was the uh, the Lollapalooza tour, <laughs> tour bus. And the, the running joke was that we were always terrified that if we got pulled over, you know, that the, the dogs were going to go. They had they had taken the thing completely apart. And by the time we got it, it had been like converted and looked, you didn't say anything on the side or anything. But yeah, it had been the Lollapalooza tour bus. I slept on that thing for, I can't tell you how long. I spent a lot of time sleeping on that thing. I legit asked dad, so nobody suspected anything about Liberace back then. Did your dad laugh? Because I remember my grandmother used to say, when I was a kid, my grandmother, she was the biggest Liberace fan, and they would go see them in concert and everything. She had a picture of him, actually, uh, standing with uh, with Liberace. And, uh, but she would say, oh, he's so fantastic. Oh, is he gay? But he's so fantastic. Like, she she definitely was, uh, she knew, but she loved him. Uh Let's see. Eagles, first concert, Hotel California. Well, it's hard to do better than that, isn't it, Susan P? I mean, holy hell. Uh, I saw the Eagles, I think, a half a dozen times, but it was all one tour, and it was all uh, it was all the uh, the Hell Freezes Over tour. No complaint, but I didn't I didn't see any of the old ones. You were pregnant at a Nine Inch Nails concert. I don't know how I feel about this, Kirsten. I'm going I'm to have to run this through my dome. What do you think, Calhoun? Kirsten was in the mosh pit, nine months pregnant. See how I'm, see how I'm taking a little license? You got to take the story and jazz it up a little bit because it wasn't great to start with, but by the time I'm done. So Kirsten and Melinda in the mosh pit. And nine inch nails doing a beer funnel, hands like this. Calhoun says he's doing this number. So apparently, you were spotted there as well. See, it just keeps getting better, just keeps getting better. 
It was Juliana Marcellus that wrote um, Plop, Plop, Fizz, Fizz. He sings it on, I have an album that he sings it on. Maybe he was the one that sang it, but I have him singing that. Um, the uh, All of the jingles on his, I only have one album of his, but he starts it out with all of his, yeah, I just admitted it. So I don't want to hear it from you. Yes, I have a, uh, a barely man enough, uh, Barry Manilow, what's his name? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He did not write the song, I Write the Songs. Wasn't that written by, was that Paul Anka? Who wrote that? I think that might have been Paul Anka. That's not what I, look, no, that's not what I'm hearing. That's, look, you take that up with my, uh, you take that up with my crew. Don't, don't you yell at me. Johnny Scoville says you're not right. You don't want Johnny Scoville saying you're not right. I'm telling you. Tracy Chapman. I didn't see. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'd be lying to you people. I've, I've missed a couple of Grammys. Right. I've missed. I've missed a few um, Grammys. I think the last one I saw. Michael Jackson took home a bunch of uh, awards at the last Grammys I watched. I'm not being funny. You saw Jimmy Buffett. Wow. First concert is Buffett, and the second is the Beach Boys. Well, if you're from Florida, don't you just stop at that point? I mean, who else you got to say? Aren't you done? <laughs> that, <laughs> no, you know what? You know who else you could have done? There's there, a lot of a lot of really great, great rock bands um, and, and rock stars came out of Florida. A lot of them. Steve Miller Band, uh, oh, just a bunch of them, a bunch. Alanis Morissette is your cousin? You know something? Do you guys ever talk? Because I got a great Alanis Morissette story too. I did time with a guy that told me this great story about Alanis Morissette. And he's got, he had tons of pictures of her. And I can't tell the story here though, but. But I am a uh, I'm a fan of hers. Um, all of these people. So yeah, I just saw a comment. I know that it's somebody that uh, was watching the beginning. Wow. Now here, this is this is kind of classic, people, right? So now that I'm starting really good rumors about people, right? We already started this one. Now I got cat here. I was pregnant at a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. And apparently, punched a girl that wouldn't stop hitting on my guy, forward slash husband. I plead the fifth. Well, when the apparently comes in, yeah, maybe you're going for plausible deniability, like you really know what happened, but you're saying apparently, you know, that, or the other option is Calhoun, beer funnels again, right? Got the, uh, got mom nine months. Yeah, he's holding it up. He's doing, yeah, you were, uh, Got enough beer funnels in the parking lot, and you're not going to remember whether or not you, uh, you know, you smacked the girl that was hitting on your husband. People, you pregnant women have got to stop going to concerts, right? Stay out of the mosh pits, and please, break the tank. It's so good when it hits your lips. It's so good. Love that. Your first concert was Charlie Daniels. Wow. And then he handed you his pick. The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. I'm a big fan of Charlie Daniels. It's not even his best song, but I do dig that song. His best song is that, uh, I was taking a trip out to LA, cruising along in my Chevrolet, talking on a number and digging on the radio. <laughs> well, I'm a fan. Tommy, Google says that Bruce Johnston wrote, I write the uh, songs, except you used a D instead of an S. And now I'm wondering if you were actually Googling a porn spoof. <laughs> Shannon Smith says, with the men I attract, I would have been better off with, Liber with Liberace. Well, I think it would have been hard to go wrong with Liberace. He was just such a sweetheart. Um, 
I saw the Ramones and got bruises all over my body from being in the front row and pushed up against the barricades. Good times. Good times. Oh, shards of words, who has already been banned from the boat for a day, comes back to say, Beastie Boys? I saw them in 2000. Rest in peace, MCA. Yeah. Yeah, that was hard. That really was. Beasties were uh, the the beasties were special. They really were. If you don't get that, then you might have missed that generation. But the beasties were special. I mean, you listen to the stuff today. Go find me. Go find me some f bombs in a beastie in a Beastie Boys tune. Let me know which one it was. Adam and the boys weren't doing a lot of cursing. I was pretty impressed at the time, really. Squirrel girl, glad you're here. U2 is on your bucket list. I'll be damned. Well, they're uh, they're holding court right now in Vegas, aren't they? Aren't they doing a, uh, they got a residency in Vegas. Now would be a pretty good time to go. MCA won again. MCA is winning. He's my ace. So I grab the piano player and I punch him in the face. Piano player is out. The music stopped. This kid had heat. And he got popped. Mike D grabbed the money. MCA grabbed the gold. He grabbed two girlies and a beer. That's cold. All right, here's the deal. What do you sound like? Um, I'm guessing me. Uh, you were pregnant at the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. You were 16, going on 50. My son's dad continually retells the story of me knocking that girl out. <laughs> um, 16, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, going on 50. You're a youngster. Well, by my standards. By Reese's standards, you're a teenager. Because, damn, Reese is uh, Anna Nicole. I'm going to start calling her Anna Nicole Reese. That's really funny. You watch. I'll get busted. Someone's texting her right now to tell her I called her Anna Nicole. You watch. She'll pop up in a second and be like, what did you just call me? Because you guys are all snitches. None of you can be trusted. I'm sorry. but um, You have a poster for the Beasties uh, at a... Uh, the bar in San Francisco. Oh man, the Beasties were. I really. You saw Adam Ant. Giddy giddy two shoes. Giddy giddy two shoes. Giddy two giddy two giddy giddy two shoes. You don't drink, don't smoke. What you do, you do. You don't drink. Adam Ant. Dude sold a lot of merchandise. He sold a lot of merchandise. I don't know if he sold a lot of albums, but boy, he was a marketer. I liked Adam Ant, man. He was, in a few, he was in a couple of movies, too. Tampa B says, actually, I don't snitch. Well, thank you. So we got one of you. You, Tampa, I wasn't I wasn't worried about you, to be honest. It's Calhoun. He's, uh, he's worried about. You know what I mean? Like, right around the time I started doing it, his head goes down a little bit like this. And then, like, he can't see his face anymore. I'm like, he's texting. He's texting. You saw Pat Benatar open for Journey. Was so wasted. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Cinderella, that is the hardest thing I've ever read in my life. I can't put that up, but, but my heart bleeds for you. I mean it. And you know what? God forgive me, but I hope wherever he uh, he is right now, he's having a very bad day. No. Uh, uh, I really do. You know what? This is for you. Thoughts and prayers, because that's got to be something that'll take a lot of uh, a lot of time and a lot of personal effort to heal from. God bless you, man. You worked with Beck, so he is out, huh? Okay. I know that uh, snitches get ditches, not stitches. Snitches get ditches. Um. Yeah, you know, I, I heard, I don't know uh, a lot about the Beck thing. I know that I heard A.A. Ron talk about it. Um, he's on a couple of different videos. He's made reference to uh, to Beck and whether or not Beck was in, not in, whatever. I don't know. Um, oh, nice. Here's the artist of the year. Uh, I don't know. I dig, uh, I dig some of his stuff, like especially when... Um, when his, that album first came out, it was so unique. 
I knew he was a second gen. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I just didn't know what his uh, his standing was. Um, you know what I? You want my uh, you want my take on Beck? I think Beck is your uh, kind of like your Frank Zappa, <laughs> a little bit. You were nine months pregnant and saw a Prince and the Revolution. Two days later, your daughter was born, and she has got to be cooler than your uh, the other side of your pillow. It, Two days before she arrived, she was at a Prince concert. Holy hell, that's cool. That really is. That's just so cool. But what is wrong with all of you women? For real, do you know how many of you have just admitted to doing beer funnels uh, on the uh, in the mosh pit? Nine months pregnant, and uh, there was there was talk of uh, doing uh, whippets and Calhoun. It was crazy. Truthfully, absolutely crazy. Did somebody say Wibbits? <laughs> yeah, all it takes. Hey, look who's here. See, I knew when he did it. Hello, Relatable Reese. How are you? It's so good to see you. I'm glad that you've joined us. I said nothing wrong. Uh, Edgar Winter and his brother were uh, albinos. I I knew Edgar was. Uh, I don't remember his brother very well, but the uh, funk uh, they brought funk to a, uh, a science. It is always retired. Red said it wasn't me. You know what? You always got to watch. Because those it wasn't me's, they're always the ones that did it. Always. Now I can't find my phone, which means the cat is on it. All right, so if you're texting me, you can't. And sometimes I get texted. Uh, Reese, what do you think of the new glasses? Huh? Huh? I can now color coordinate my glasses. And I will have you know that I'm pretty damn... Uh, I'm pretty damn proud of these glasses. Carol Bernard says, I I have seen. Hold on. Oh, you said Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Relatable Anna. Relatable Anna. Hey, Reese, when you were nine months pregnant, were you at a concert at a, in a mosh pit? Eh? Just out of curiosity? Because apparently that's the thing to do when you're nine months pregnant, if you're a, a crew member of the lifeboat. Everybody here at nine months, we're out doing beer funnels and uh, and slam dancing in mosh pits. A little freaked out by this, uh, by this crowd. And who is Anna? How about that? She was not. You see that? At least one of you. At least one of you. <laughs> I was eating at Ben and Jerry's. I will have you know that I remember when Ben and Jerry's only had one establishment, and it was in Burlington, Vermont, right near the university. And uh, if you brought stuff there, you could dump anything you wanted into their uh, stuff. And we had friends that almost invented all of those um, recipes. See, Chamon Cricket says, if Reese is Anna Nicole, does that mean uh, Gertie is sugar pie? Well, who said she was Anna Nicole? I can't believe you would say that. That's just, that's hurtful, Cricket. I am, uh, I'll not have that here. See what I did there, Reese? How I stood up for you? <laughs> I'm not letting anybody call you uh, Anna Nicole or Reese Nicole Smith. <laughs> Yes, don't forget to gently but meaningfully stroke the light button. It wants you. Um, fondle it on the way out if you uh, if you don't mind. Got a festival early, and mom's old friend was there camping in a band section. Oh, okay. Hey, it's on video. What? I'm, I. It doesn't sound like something I would do. 
Does not sound like something I would do. Can't be crew. 16 pregnant. First concert was 40, though. Oh, okay. You can see through my nonsense? What, what nonsense am I seeing through? Anna Nicole? I was, uh, I was, oh, wow. You saw Walsh play at a private record. I'm a huge Joe Walsh fan. Loved, loved Joe Walsh. Huge fan. Um, Feety Foo? Um, it's Reese's. Feetsies. That's the, um, that's going to be the, uh, her new channel. Midnight show. Oh, we're so happy you're here. Do you see Reese? So happy you're here. I'm in Virginia, but my family lives in the Detroit area. I've never been to Duluth, but I would love to see the big ships coming into port. I want to tell you something. Uh, one of the highlights of, um, the uh, when I got out of the joint, the only place that I could get a job was on a uh, at a shipyard, and it was at uh, the Oakland, um, the Oakland ship uh, where they unload all the boats in Oakland. And I used to love watching those ships come in. I really did. Did you just say the band Lover Boy? Hold on, hold on. I, I'm going to end with the Lover Boy pose. That's how I'm going out tonight. You guys know the Lover Boy pose, don't you? I. Uh, they were going back on tour. It was like almost at 2000, right? You're not leaving, uh, Reese. You're staying. Don't go anywhere. Uh, and he said they're going back on tour. I'm like, well, they're not going to pull that off because they used to wear like leather pants. And, and they're, the album cover was a guy standing in a pair of red leather pants. And he had his fingers crossed like this. And they were like on his right butt cheek. And I said something to my friend that, you know, I don't think I'd want to see that album cover today because these guys were had gotten quite large. Like they were, you know, 250, 260. But um, he laughed hard enough where he crashed the car that we were driving, which didn't belong to either of us, which was kind of a bummer. But uh, it was pretty funny at the time. Loverboy was a good show. Saw Def Leppard too. Did you see Def Leppard with two arms or one? That's the question. Uh oh. I wonder what happened. You guys want to place bets? Do you think the cat the cat did it is option one? The cat like unplugged something. Option two, let's say Oh, Option two, it was it was the captain. Let's find out. Place your bets now. What's happening? So. What happened? I was told there would be no man. I uh -huh. was uh, I was going off about a, uh, I was going off about Def Leppard and whether or not you saw Def Leppard with two arms or one. If you are uninitiated into the uh, band Def Leppard. You may be unaware of the fact that their their uh, uh, drummer lost an arm. Spanx is in charge now. Good God, Kristen. He's been wanting to hear that his entire life. Don't say that out loud. I don't think you have any idea the danger we would all be in if uh, if we let Spanky uh, in charge. This is a frightening concept all the way around. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So... After a, uh, a drunken accident, which I believe was in a uh, automobile, he lost an arm. Then he had to go out. He is better with one arm. Thank you, Ben. I was about to say that. He's so much better a drummer with one arm. And he uses his feet. In a, he's got a custom setup. So his feet are doing not only what you would do with your bass pedals or whatever, but it's also doing the work of his left arm. So I saw him both ways. He was so much more impressive with one arm. But he is an amazing drummer. They have to take him off stage, though, about every three or four songs because he gets 
he gets spaghetti legs so bad from using his legs that honestly, like he puts an arm around one guy's shoulder and they kind of just leave, lead him off stage. His legs are as big around as a tree. Like he, he could probably kick a football farther than Huxley. I can't back that up. You would assume with a leg the size of an oak tree that he could probably kick a ball as far as Huxley. But I don't know, 35 yards is pretty damned impressive. I don't think I ever kicked 35 yards, even when I was. You know what? Feetsies. You heard me. You, they will. Oh, sure. Sure. Sure you weren't texting her. Reese, how are you? You rang. It's, uh, it's Reese Nicole Smith. Come on, that's funny. She's trying not to laugh. You that's know what? It's classy. I'm trying not to laugh. I'm going to take it as a compliment. It's fairly classy. You're darn right it is. I am a huge fan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. True story. What, what about movie soundtracks? Oh, man, you can't start that in an hour and 16 minutes. Do you realize the danger? I love Geoplanet, Jane. Um, yeah, I would love to do. Uh... Reese's yeah. Reese's? Somebody snitched, didn't they? That's Maybe. right. I have loyal friends that yes. uh, reach out every now and again. Calhoun, um, I find out that's you. I am crushing your larynx. Um, what are you smiling about? It was him, wasn't it? You turncoat little rat. Actually, no, I was doing some online shopping. I hadn't gone upstairs yet. But I also was um, sent a bootleg copy of your um, naked twister yoga video, and I was really enjoying it. <laughs> did you do? Did you watch the whole thing? Um, just the clip that this individual sent me, and uh, really, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it a few more times tonight. I have some things okay. I need. To, I have some things Excellent. I need to get done, and Excellent. that will help. Uh <laughs> I'm trying to learn yoga, so. <laughs> I'm your guy. I am your guy. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And next week we're starting um, the lazy yoga too. Oh, good. Lazy yoga. Can't wait. Can't wait to get a bootleg copy of that. Oh, no. What was this? Tanith. Sounds like Reese's feces. Oh, I don't like that. You've, you've done ruined it. Yeah, that doesn't do it for me. Thank you, Tampa no. B. <laughs> send, send more bootlegged copies later, please. <laughs> Just a yeah. very short clip. Oh, I see what you did there, Dirty Mouse. I mm -hmm. see what you did there. That was a, uh, your hands were really not that big, Joe, wasn't it? Um, I have to be honest. I, my favorite part so far. I, I was just trying to watch it again, as you called. But um, I really like the the tree thing that you're doing. Um, please keep that up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> keep it up. Yes. Um, it looked really good. Uh, and I do like to climb trees. I just want to make that clear. I am not uh, in my yeah. house. I am in your house. I will. I should go. I was adding uh, things no, to my cart. Um, no, yeah, you're good. Um, you were adding things to your cart? I was doing some online shopping. Man. Oh, oh man. Uh, the number of, the number of, um, of weird. Uh, no, I wrote that. He didn't write that. What are you talking about? Thank you, though. The number of um, weirdos that are probably watching. Yeah, there's a lot of weirdos on planet Earth. Statistically speaking, you can pretty much guarantee that there's at least one. Am I blushing? What would I be blushing about? She hasn't even said anything uh, really Reese of yet. No, I try to be good on in, over in your house. Hmm? I try That's to. That's not I try true. To right. You've never. When did, when did that start? I just. Want to keep it you keep were, it fresh. You were keep feigning. You were feigning. Uh, I like that. That you had that look like moi. Like you never had actually. No, you've been a you've been a very well behaved uh, Reese on the. Thank you so much. Really trying really, to polish it. Polish it up. Spanky, I noticed you highlighted that. But, uh, picked that one, did you? When are we doing another show, Reese? Inquiring minds want to know. I'm on your schedule, Captain. When would you like well, to do it? I agree with you, Mary, by the way. Uh, Thank you, Mary. The question becomes, um, 
I have I have a couple of things that uh, that I wanted to uh, to discuss with you, and I it's it's going to be a slightly different format if you're willing to go there. What are we doing? Yeah, I'd love to. Oh, was it like is something serious? What were you wanting um, to discuss? Well, no, it it will be something serious. I lost control of my eyebrows. I'm so sorry. I saw what that. What was that all about? I was that flirting. Was... I was silently flirting. That's what that was. I don't want to open my mouth. <laughs> That's my way of flirting. I came from the Church of Scientology. I don't know how to do it. Don't be making fun. I think you made fun of me enough tonight when I wasn't even here to defend myself. She came to manhandle some buttons. That's what I'm talking about. Do you See? notice? Do you notice my new lisp? Do that one more time. My new lisp. It sounds I, a lot like your old lisp. I don't know. My teeth feel much thicker. Like I have to like push my lip out to talk and it feels like I have braces on and I have like this new. We okay. <laughs> Girl, you, oh. No, get back here. Get back here. What are you doing? Get back here. No, I'm not doing it. Leave. I didn't do it. My arms are crossed. I wasn't even touching anything. Well, I was, and I'm, I'm playing with my fidget stuff. Then it's your cat. I don't know what to tell you. No, it's I got new son. teeth, Ben Bacon it's Bits. I got, son. I got new teeth. Being good. You know something? Your teeth look fantastic. Now, I don't think that your uh, lisp has changed at all. Okay. I think you sound exactly the way that you used to. Now, I had a friend who was an actress, and he got something done it wasn't like a, a whole grill but she had something done and she was very convinced that uh she was um lisping as well and he spent like one week trying to not use the letter s and it was one of the funniest things that i ever saw so you could try to just maybe not use that s sound which is a little tough because of your name but my name and the fact that i actually talk a lot but um I just, I feel like, I feel like I have braces. I on. talk a lot, but see that you'd have been set with that sentence and there wasn't even an essence. You could do it. It's just, it requires amazing concentration, but can be done. Say Reese's feetsies. See, it's weird. Something's not, it's off. It's Say that one right. more time. Say it again though. Reese's feetsies. Yeah, it's not no, right. That time you sounded, no, that time you sounded right. The first time you didn't though. I feel like I have, um, Huckleberry. <laughs> what did I miss? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Geoplanet Jane. It's Malachite. I feel like I have um braces over my teeth. They're too thick. Okay. <laughs> you feel like you have braces. No, I'm listening, but you were you put that last one, that, that last one couldn't have been real. That one sounded like it was very lispy. That one was really, that was legit. Do I, I feel the, like I have braces on my teeth. I feel like I have braces on my front teeth. No, that's, you sound good. You sound, you're all right, I promise. <laughs> she <laughs> sells seashells by the seashore. No, I got a better one. <laughs> Will you say this one for me? All things considering, I would just assume I have a fresca. Come on, you got this. All things considering, I would just assume have a fresca. All things considering, I would just assume have a fresca. That's what I mean. It's thicker. You know what? No, come on. We're going to work through this. We got this. This is, it's speech therapy. My boy's doing this right now too. Q is doing this right now, literally. He's relearning the ST sound. But <laughs> You can do this. You, uh, you, you got this. One more You're time. You're not acting right, Scoville. I'll tell you that right no, now. No, I am. One of I'm us helping. is not acting right, and it's not me. I'm helping. I'm going out of my way to help. I'm being such a gentleman. Are you ready? All things considering. I know how to talk. All things I would, considering. I would just assume have a fresca. What are these, marriage vows? I would just Everyone... assume have a fresca. Perfect. They're too you thick. Sound, no, it's not that they're too thick. It's that it takes a little bit to get used to any kind of change that goes on in uh, in your uh, in your grill. <laughs> Say suffer and succotash. 
That that would be a good one. Can you drop that one? Suffering Succotash? I just did. One Suffering more time. Succotash. <laughs> Perfect. She sells she sells by the seashore for sure. I think it's maybe just me. I think it is you. You sound fantastic. Spanky says, I love it so much, actually. See that? Spanky what, loves it. What, let me do clarify here because I don't want anyone to think I got dentures. What new teeth did you get? They're just they're just composite veneers. They look similar to what like a horse would be born with. They're just a, comp a composite veneer. And then I had part of my gums lasered off because they were apparently- You had part of your gums lasered off. A smart person might think it takes some time to adjust. But she saw two really good concerts for her first two shows, and I'm not talking to her for the rest of the day. So bring you the horse blanket. Calhoun, what is that? He thinks I have horse teeth. I, don't, I said you, it. No, you do not have horse teeth. Stop saying that. You have a beautiful smile. That's what Tampa Bee just said. You have a beautiful smile. Ready? Hold on. I'm texting you, so don't you even start. You're texting who? You. I'm not. You guys really, are right here. I texted, no, but I thought if I if I if I was texting if I told her it was anybody. You else, dirty remember, bird! Uh, Keep that up. I love what? it so much. That's my favorite. That's my favorite, Tommy, right there. I love it when you send me watch pictures. You dirty see bird. That, see that? Now people are going to think I just sent you a picture of my watch. No, uh, but he sent me words that describe it. And creepy it was, old lady, you nailed it. And I love it. Creepy old lady named a cocaine kitty. Uh, I love that Rolex. A, I love that Rolex. It's a nice one. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 40 millimeter. Coming out in a 42 next year. Big thing. Now you're just texting each other in front of us? Wow. No, I wasn't really texting her. He I'm texts me all the time when I'm live. And I am kind enough not to do it to you. You text me all the time when I'm live trying to break my concentration. And it works every time, 60% of the time. I'm sorry. Did you say you never do it to me? Ever. She's not telling you the truth. You can I play did it poker. One You're time. excellent at that. Did you see? Did you see how good she was at poker? Though, <laughs> I think I did it once. I'm running. That. I'm going to make a short out of that. That was the best. That was the best. You can't lie. I've ever seen in my life. That was so awesome. <laughs> Spanx. <laughs> not. Oh, that was great. No, that was not even close. Oh yeah, say Worcester. Can you say Worcester? Worcester? You mean Worcestershire? No, no, don't put the R in it. It's Worcester. Worcester? There you go. You even sounded like you were from there. You got it. I'm going to Worcester to buy a toasty, you bastard. Try that. What is a Worcester? <laughs> it's a it's a place. I'm going to Worcester to buy a toaster, you bastard. I'm not gonna say that. I'm training you to speak like somebody from Boston. Can you handle this? Why would I do that? So that you could sound like somebody from Boston. I've never even been to Boston. Why would I want to sound well, like that's why I'm not going to let you in there talking like you do now. Pack the car. That would be better, right? She can't get upset with that. We'll give her the, the standard Harvard Yard routine. You pack the car in Harvard Yard. That's not. Tell me, like, tell me the toaster one isn't more fun. Ben Affleck says that in uh, I love Goodwill Hunting. He says, let's go to a Hobbit bar. We'll F up some smack kids. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm not going to Boston. I don't need to speak like I'm going there. I pronounced it Worcester for years. You're not the only one. I promise you, a lot of people shipping Huxley. off to of Boston. Huxley has a better poker face. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has a better poker face. I never Worcester. said I had a good See, one. See, GeoPlanet, GeoPlanet Janet's got it. That's how you say it. Worcester. Uh, Worcester. Worcester. Worcester is a place? It is. Worcester, Massachusetts. In fact, that movie that you dig, it takes place about two uh, towns over from Worcester, the one you're trying to get me to watch. 
Oh, the town? Yeah. That's in Charlestown. Yeah. Right. It's a couple of towns over from Worcester. Nah, maybe three towns. But I love that. Almost. Of course you do. What do you mean by of course that? You do. Because deep down, you've got a thing for uh, Northeast accents. Oh, I, okay. I thought you were going to Oh, wait a second. What were you going to say, Perv? <laughs> what were you going to say? Nice. I wasn't going to say anything. We're not putting up with that. It's it was not going to fly. I thought it was about bank robbers. Oh, well, that checks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a thing for crims. It's kind of crimmy. Uh, you know, my favorite job isn't Dropkick Murphys, aren't they? The uh, band that sings. So, uh, yeah, I know. Kiss Me, I'm Wasted. Or something along those lines. I can't sing the words because they're all dirty, but it's a great song. Flogging Molly, yeah. Oh, you're right. That is Flogging Molly, isn't it? Sorry. I uh, try not to flog it. Try to flog that uh, like button on the way out. Call it Molly. Oh flog God. it. Do what you will. Question. Hey, Tommy, what do you know about Patek Philippe? Never heard of him. I scored one at a thrift store of all places. See my, see my dog doing the... Uh, I know I, it is the greatest watch company in the world. The um, really terrible, horrible versions of those watches are fifteen to 19000 and the normal ones run sixty to 70. The high end ones go for about eight, nine million. It's the best watch company ever made. Speaking of Very watches, um, real watches, I would like to purchase. I kind of, I'm kind of wanting, I'm trying to style certain outfits. And I, I realize in my collection, I would, I'm missing this and I need it. it. Just, I just, I just thought of it today. I really want a men's, like, because well, you don't know this, but like sometimes I style outfits like, men's inspired like i'll throw on a blazer with like um a really fun oxford or like a loafer mm -hmm. kind of, you know but uh, but i'm very girly so i wouldn't like let's not well the point is to this is i would like to get a i would like <laughs> to um it's fun to mix it up yes but, it, but remain girly i it's very important right. why are we talking about this i really want to get a so like, what you're okay, saying is you want my watch I would love to have your watch. Yeah, I would really, I want, I want it. I thought that's where we were going. Uh, a men's, like a guy, like a, a, can I, do you have something I can buy? Absolutely. Great. This could have a been. A shard of later. words. Um, we could have done this later, but if you don't mind, just don't forget. Cause I really do. I'm missing that in my watch collection. Shard of words. Shoot me an email. Captain Tommy Scoville at gmail.com. I happen to have literally, I have what you want. I have every Holy Grail vintage Seiko ever made. I rebuilt one of every single one, literally. Like that's, I did a lot of, and that's how I learned was working on Japanese watches because they were predictable from one to the next where Swiss gets to be a little, but yeah, I got that. So shoot me an email. What's the GeoPlanet says, want you to make sure you're getting that right. What's the? Going to Worcester to buy a toaster. Good God, Reese. Next time you do that, I will show everybody. Okay. I was texting I, Chow Yun I, Smut. I, I knew that. But since I saw you go to your phone, I thought I would try to, uh, to message you. Know, she doesn't, she's not nice to me. She doesn't text me. You're kind of spicy tonight. You've been no, kind of... Do you do you text me? I have to text first. I have to call first. Actually, you've gotten a little bit better about that. I've, I've gotten got one better. text a week. Oh, you know, where she she oh. starts the text. I got to do all. Oh, of this oh, is that is that right? So I'm, I'm willing to do it. You don't. Well, Molly's out. playing in Tucson. Do you you have played out me? all day long on me. I think it's my teeth. I've noticed you've stopped texting because of my. <laughs> don't talk to me as much. You, you think I, I stopped texting because of your teeth? Because of the teeth. Do you know what? I do have a Cartier watch for sale currently. Do you really? In fact, in fact, I have two, except one's not for sale. Yeah, currently I have a Cartier watch. I have a tank in white gold. Yep. Smile Why if you're lying, Reese. That? What? Wait, what? Why don't I... Oh, I see you. I see how you're going. 
Why, why don't I know about it? What if I wanted to buy it? I don't get to know anything. You don't tell me anything. You don't that's answer That's the your second phone. one that's not for sale, Reese. That would be the second card. Anyone that's not for sale. See? Why is it not for sale? Because it's yours. The other one. Oh. I you know, know what it was, don't you? It was those eyebrows. Just knocked me right down. You know what I mean? Nothing. Nothing brings them in like the... Uh, I would love to own something fancy like that. I've never owned anything that fancy. Cartier is a a beautiful, beautiful company. They make great stuff. Never gone above a Michelle watch. That's nothing. I've never been able to afford. Um, You should never, ever, as a woman, buy a watch for yourself anyway. Guys should give that to you. It's jewelry. It's not. It's not an accessory. It's jewelry. It should be something that comes as a gift. Robin says, "Flirty eyebrows do it every time," and you're dead right. That white socks. Do you know that I've purchased every watch I've ever owned? Nobody's ever bought me a watch before. Is this true? Yes. Yeah. I feel cheated. I had no idea. No one's ever bought me a watch. I bought that for myself for my birthday. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's just not right. It doesn't feel right now that you say it. No, no, no. I'm uh, I'm bummed out. Now. Worcester has my favorite, the polar bear. I'm sorry. What? Polar bear mascot from the beverage. When you drive down the wicked congested highway. Chrissy, never in Newton. Nice. And that wicked congested highway. Wicked congested out there. The mascot from the Bevage. What's that? Stolen from a packy, no doubt. I'm te- I'm I, just it's not, it's not that you're outsiders. I just don't like you. No, I'm kidding. Wicked smart, says shards of words. And uh, if... Um, I would say, look, if you if you sent a, uh, uh, an email to me and you didn't get a response, it's because you fell through the cracks and you need to send me another one. There was a period of time where I fired one of the worst human beings I ever came in contact with, sadly, and had a bunch of emails that needed to be um, that needed to be recouped. So, preppy style, preppy style, preppy style. Preppy stuff. I don't remember what we were talking about that, that was preppy stuff. Oh no, you were a Fitbit. Oh. Nothing computerized. Um, Nothing computerized. Please. Please. He is a little feisty tonight. He's spicy. You know, it kind of bothers me because I you've been gone all day. Like I haven't heard from you. Yeah, and I was I'm concerned. Having some, uh, I'm having some. I'm having some issues. My ex thought a watch was a pre-engagement ring gift. Nearly had a heart attack when he saw my drawer of watches. Men are silly. Uh, Some of us. I hate to hear that you're having issues and I wish I knew more about this, but. You don't know what Packy means? Uh, Packy is a place where you buy liquor. You buy it at the Packy. Uh, Package stores. They um, they sell stuff, but they don't like you get 24 cans, but they're just in like a cardboard. They're they're not packaged correctly. So you get them really cheap. Yes, uh, Geo, uh, J- Janet, I repair Omega. That's one of the watches I work on. Now, I have to ask Reese two questions really quickly. Reese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been, I have been, um, getting emails from individuals who are curious if uh, we are going to be continuing this series. I am of the belief that I I do feel very uh, strongly that I've I've gotten to the bottom of your story, but I don't want to stop doing uh, serious stuff. I think that there are things that we can go over by, uh, by topic kind of a thing. But I don't think that um, it needs to be. Uh, um, yeah, getting serious. 
taking it to the next can... you want to go to the next step with me is that what you mean i'm gonna take it to the next right. level that that's where i was going with that that's where okay. i was going with that mm -hmm. kind of like how i had mm -hmm. to ask you to the prom i have to ask you this too because you just can't seem to uh do you, by way of full disclosure i was told there was a prom as you were asking me to do it it wasn't like there was this problem that was going on for months and I was sitting back going, I wonder if anyone's asking Reese. It was, hey, Scoville, you know they're having a prom, right? You're going with me. Isn't that kind of how it went down? Because I don't think you, I think that's kind of how it went. It wasn't really. Probably. So what's your question? <laughs> did you say, did you just see how she tapped out when she was wrong? Like she just wanted to completely downplay it. Yeah, yeah, probably. She gave it, it was uh, it was Silence of the Lambs. I just, I literally just got the, yeah, she's a big girl. That's what you just did to me. You gave me the Clarice at the door. You did. Tell me I'm wrong. That's exactly what you just did. Yeah. yeah was, she probably, graping fat we was she a great big fat oh. person? She's a big girl, sir. Oh, oh, oh wait. She's a great you can big use my person. phone. Um, she's a great big fat person. <laughs> for Frederica Bermel. No, I don't. I don't know her. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> oh wait. Um. Uh. What is your question? You want to go deep? You want to take it deep? Wow. Yes, that is. That was actually where I was going with that. I thought you'd never ask. I've been yes. wanting to do that for a while. Yeah. Heavy Crazy. stuff. Yeah, deeper. Love Definitely. Stuff. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I, and I think, uh, you know, you could eat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a good song too, by the way, Jen, Madonna, um, you could even, um, you could continue on the story because you know, what's cool about you. I've been telling, I've been really talking you up over, uh, on a, a smaller channel relatable. <laughs> it's a small, we're a small operation, but I've been talking you up. And uh, I have been uh, saying, yes, yes. Tommy is the absolute, you are so good at what you do with this, 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 th th see the lisp, you hear it? You're so good. I was good. paying attention to the content. I didn't catch you're the, uh, the so, uh You're so good with the um, questions. I've had a lot of interviews, my friend, and uh, you're really, really good. And I like where you take the question. So honestly, we could continue. What I'm trying to say is the story, I don't know if it's over. I don't even, did we go everywhere with it? Um, no, I guess what I what I think what I meant more than that was, I don't want to be stuck with the constrictions of trying to do a story, but I don't, I want to do some serious stuff. There's yeah, just serious to topics. Correct. Yeah, I think that I think that as a uh, as a, a man and a woman, there's a couple of things that we could discuss that would be really interesting, just based on the fact that a man like you and a, and a, and a like girl me. like me. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. What are the chances of a girl like you and a guy like me? Not not good. Not good. One in a million. <laughs> <laughs> saying I got a chance. Nice set of hooters you got there. <laughs> if you don't like that movie, you're on the wrong channel. I'm sorry. You just are. I love it that. Puts movie. the lotion in the basket or it gets the no, puts the lotion on the skin. Well, now you're confusing them. That's a different do so movie. whichever it's told. It will show you the meaning of pain. Oh, he was so good, man. You know, speaking of Silence of the Lambs, I don't think people got the uh connection there when you said that yesterday you said um we you had a signs of the lands moment with my stuffed dog nobody knew what moment you were talking about really i don't think I'm so shocked. i i guarantee you at least some of the people got no there's you too many slow <laughs> There's Sorry, too much question. to that movie that I don't know that I would have been able to identify what point you were making. Two different movies, Tommy. Nope. See, movies. I knew somebody was going to guess it. The Pit. Nope. What part, though, Rain Virus? What part was he referring to? I could, I could quote that entire movie. I bet I've seen that movie over a hundred times. You know exactly what part I was talking about, don't you? 
I do. I think so. If you don't, I'm never talking to you again. So it's probably important that you kind of know. God, you are like, zesty. You are zesty tonight. I'm sitting. Yeah. Uh, nope, it's not Benjamin Raspail. Uh-uh. Tampa B doesn't like trivia. Okay, well, hold on then, guys. What part was he talking about? So I was talking about the only part. Tampa B, did you see that? Familiar? Pretty sure I stole that from Florida. <laughs> Wasn't this in our car when <laughs> pretty sure I stole this from Tampa B's car? Oh, you did? You can shoot me. Uh, um, absolutely. Send me some pics. Absolutely. Send me some pics. Uh, Tampa B was told there would be no trivia or, or math. I love that water bottle too, actually. I'm, uh, I'm pretty fond of it. So what are you reading, Reese? Because I don't feel like you're with me. I'm what are you looking at? If I'm I looking... did that, she would. I mean. You do it to me all the time. Out like a brush. Fire. Were you talking to me? You do that to me all the time. You blow <laughs> me off all the time. Yes, you do. I that, yeah. That hurts. Does it really? I've never blown you off, Anna Nicole. Not once. Okay, so now I just now we just know that this is pure. This is just all no. lies. No. Um. No. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the chat, Scoville. Well, that's what I do. But when I read the chat, you yell at me. Okay. This is going nowhere. Taxi yet. driver reference? No. All right. So look, I'm gonna uh, here's the, here's what it was. Uh, no, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. Here you go. We'll make it easy. Punch and pie. <laughs> Please tell me that that was a South Park reference. Please tell me that was a South Park reference. I was told there would be cake. Uh, the moment. It's a, it's a great the moment. Silence of the lamb. The silence of the lamb moment. Yeah, it's great. Um, when I asked, so this is what I was making a reference to, and I guess you, that that it went over heads. But there, maybe maybe I'm a really twisted and sick uh, sick individual, but the. I see that movie differently than other people see it. And I kind of see it as a, um, there's a, there's a beautiful relationship between Clarice and Lecter. Now that may, you, you may find that uncomfortable. Oh, I find it, it really a turn on. I have always had a, go on. You're a sick person. You know, this, I am. You? I have always okay. had a crush on Hannibal Lecter and their relationship. I always, I grew up watching that movie. I wanted a boyfriend <laughs> just like him. What are you laughing at? Uh, you know, he, was, he was mad. That's my son. It's not me. He what? was passionately in love with her. Absolutely, he was he cut off his own hand for her? I but know. Anyway. I wanted to be Clarice Starling so bad. Okay, fine. Go on. I'll just sit back and people are creeped out. Go on. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. They. So. So there was a. There was a connection there between them. And thank you, Christy Hughes. When the. Uh, there was that moment when he's asking questions of um, Clarice and that moment of where he kind of reaches the point where he realizes exactly what the question he was asking he got the answer exactly he knew what the answer was at the time and when he got it there was that moment of just ah uh, and I swear to god that the uh, dog thing did that for me and you can go ahead and judge me but that was one of those things that for real I remember when, uh, when he's almost I had getting on the off first on night, it no, but the, when I had you on the first uh, time and you said, you know, that you named the dog Butch. I, when I asked you the dog's name, you seemed shocked that I wanted to know the dog's name. The uh, To me, that's a really kind of um, key question. And, you know, if it had been named like Fluffy, right, it would have kind of blown my, my, uh, my premise. But since it was named Butch. Lecter almost gets off on that scene, though. And I like it because oh, he's so in love with her. I love, he wants to I like. I thought you were talking about me when you said. No, that. he so wants say, to no, like reach. He reaches into her mind so much. Like he deeply wants to know her on this level. But I know what you're talking about. It's the scene where um, she, he asks her about a childhood memory. Mm -hmm. And she goes to the ranchers and she tries to free them out of the pen. And he says, what happened? She says, they just stood there. They wouldn't run. So I thought if I took one lamb, just one, I could save one. And she ran as fast as she could, but he was so heavy. He was so heavy. And she's like crying. And then he starts to cry. And he says, 
what became of your lamb, Clarice? And she goes, they killed him. And then he goes, thank you, Clarice. And he's like crying and he's getting One off. Tear. Like, yeah. One tear drop. Yeah, well, we kind of had one of those moments, and um, I wasn't, uh, I don't think I was being creepy. What I, and the reason I said it that way was because at the time, I didn't, I didn't, what oh, a beautiful kitty. Look at that face. Isn't she so <laughs> Great cute? Cat. She is. She just has that look like I am not at all engaging in any of this. This is my she likes world. It. She likes to be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, Christy Hughes. I love him too, Reese. He'll never kill her. He cuts his hand off for her. Oh, that's cute too. Oh, a cat butt. He cuts his hand off for her. He does. He, he is, you guys, is that not something that we, we don't want, ladies? Come on. He is so in love now, with Now, my question is. And he's so did, protective. Did all of you ladies know he was going to do that? No, I, I had no idea when he, especially oh, when he I said, this is really, he said above or below the wrist, Clarice. And then he said, this is yeah. really going to hurt. You don't remember him cutting his hand off. Oh, that man. was it. Now that was in Hannibal. So he switched movies that had Ray Liotta. That was in the Ray Liotta one. And it's, yeah. It, it's also got a different Clarice, which is maybe why you didn't. Uh, you didn't but isn't that because, scene when he oh. says that's at the end. When... Sorry. That's at the end. I love that scene because he gets really close. Like they're going to kiss. And he says, would you ever say to me, stop? If you love me, you'd stop. And she goes, not in a thousand years. And he goes, not in a thousand years. And he goes, that's my girl. And then he goes to like, take a bite out of her. I, I, see, I, I see that I have problems. Actually. I just saw it. My <laughs> life gets flashed. No, Oh no, no. You really need to go back and watch that on film. <laughs> We need to go back and watch the look Why? on your face on because it's perfect. It's absolutely I, perfect. I love how much he loves her. I don't care that it's he is yes, he is a serial killer. He's actually more than a serial, he's a cannibal, guys. I get it. But it doesn't change the love affair. He loves her so deeply. He would never kill her and he kills people for her. He protects yes, her. Yes, he does. Yes, he Come does. On. Many actually. Many actually. Yeah, he cuts. Ray Liotta's head off for her. That's so sweet. And then feeds him part of it. It really yeah. was kind of, kind of nice. I, I I was impressed with all of it. And it does. And now I have to uh, I have to wrap this up. Well, great chatting. Hi. With you. Thanks for having me on. You know something? It was well, sufficiently no, awkward. You're huh? not allowed to. Uh, you're not allowed to leave. See, she hangs up instantly every time this is over. Stick around, Reese. Maybe hang out and talk to me for a little bit before you. Uh, you go running off. What do you think? I'd love to. See? That would be so nice. Thank you, everybody. I uh, I appreciate you. Let's do this real quick because I, I tend to forget these and I don't want to do that. Oh, let's do that. For my moms, Captain and Reese. Thank you, Christy. So sweet. Reese I love Ray Liotta, too. That's sad. Ray Liotta died. That was horrible. He's such a good actor. You're going you're gonna to have to say this because it was paid for, so you, you have to. Say... Tommy tips toes through the tulips. You did perfect. It sounded so good too. I mean it. That 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 lisp. We ran my son off. I just watched him leave his, his house. We ran him off. Oh, we did uh, that last night too. Sorry, we did. catching catching alive with my favorite uh, little love bugs, Tommy and Reese, who That's makes so me cute. smile. Love you both. Love uh, you. Reese Pooh makes me smile as well. He really That's does. So sweet. Hippa bee. Two favorite creators. Don't smile. Connectors. She's talking about me and Squirrel. She said she connectors. I know. Oh, she's okay. me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're really spicy kidding. tonight. Retired Red became eight. Green. Remember, I keep dropping stuff too. My goodness, Retired Red. I love her. She's one of my mods. I, I She is absolutely. She's your, an amazing your, uh, mod. And she's been with me, yeah, since the beginning. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you, by the way. That's incredible. Sherry, look good in green. And you know what? Yet again, look at how pretty that cat is. I had a cat named Ralph that looked exactly like your cat. That Charles, is a cool real. cat. That is a very cool cat. That is a very, very cool cat. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, by the way, if you uh, 
So good. Then I'm going to have you back on here. Kiss the kitties for me. Still fighting to save one of mine. Might lose the battle, but we're fighting. Thoughts and prayers for you, Kitty. For all of us here, man. Fur, yeah, fur families right are hard, man. For real. Love a Russian blue, too. I've had uh, my uh, Spanky's cat was a big, big, huge Russian blue when he was a little boy. Um, Nicola, go to bed. What are you doing? Uh, I will see the rest of you. Reese, I would like to uh, have you back on here so that we can talk about Tom or Reese. Like huh? Benifer. Tom or Reese. Like Benifer. Well, Tom some Reese. people said Tom East. Tom East. Um, you, you say when I'd love to come back on. I really, seriously, these, these deep chats we're doing have changed so much. Even my therapist commented on it. He was like, whatever this guy is doing, he's really good for you. And I said, Oh, what a nice he? thing to say. You but know, I, don't get to see a... I don't get to see your naked yoga, but what? Uh, I... People, I'll let her fool you. Naked twister. Far more naked yoga than you have. I promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't let her fool you. She's, right. uh, she's got access to the naked yoga. She's playing with your emotions. All right, everybody. I am Captain Tommy Scoville, and I will see you on the Don't go anywhere. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, -bye. Hi, guys. You're stuck here.